On April 8th, 2021, Embrek overtook White Cat for number one on the Osa rankings, putting an end to what was once the most dominant stronghold anyone had over Osa's top rank and marked the first time in 550 days that a new player stood at number one. Everyone looked for the exciting race for number one that was sure to follow, as the gap between these two players stood at just a measly 4 PP. One good score from White Cat would see him reclaiming his throne, with Embrek being the one finally being chased after being the chaser for the past year. These two had the potential to create a historic rivalry as they fought for Osa's top rank. But you can't call something a rivalry if one side doesn't respond to the challenge. That 4 PP gap soon grew into the hundreds just a week later. Then about two months later, that gap ballooned into the thousands as the initially hyped up race for number one turned into a complete standstill. And eventually, after Emmerich beat White Cat's record for the longest consecutive reign atop the Osu rankings, he stood nearly 4,000 PP above second place. It took Emmerich about 600 days to build this lead, and that was only half of the time he would spend at the top. Four different players stood at number two behind Emmerich's unfathomable dominance. The first three could do nothing more than merely chip away at Emmerich's lead to no avail. But the fourth of these players brought a different fight that no one could have seen coming. When Akalibed reached number two for the first time, he was more than 3,000 PP behind Emmerich. And to make things worse, he ended up losing rank two to Lifeline shortly afterwards as the gap between him and the number one rank slowly grew more and more. Not many people thought that Akalibed would be the one to finally dethrone Emmerich. But soon enough, he began putting up a true fight the impossible uphill battle chasing number one would entail. And soon, he started to make everyone believe. Historic scores and records were headlined by his name. He turned the three-year standstill atop the Osu rankings into one of the most exciting developments to watch as people knew that Akalibed was truly the next one up. But even after going on arguably the greatest score-setting pop-off in Osu history, he still found himself sitting at second place. And once Embrek built his lead back up, it seemed like Akalibed's story could have sat there as the best player to never reach number one. But he never quit on himself. After several months, once again, it was him and him alone that was vying for the crown that Emrek held onto for so long. But with the second chance he gave himself, he was able to finish the journey that once seemed impossible. The challenges he took on required immense discipline and unwavering determination. For Akali Ben and how much he's willing to put in to accomplish his goals, it was only fitting that his journey to the top featured a struggle no one else could have possibly overcome. Kalibed first created his Zozo account on November 13th, 2016, and immediately, there was something that separates his journey from other top player stories. While other players' legacies are headlined by their rapid fast improvement, sheer talent alone was not how a Kalibed would make a name for himself. His improvement always came with his investment in himself and his unwavering dedication. It was fairly common for a Kalibed to log large amounts of plays each month, which was a pattern that would persist throughout the entirety of his playing career and show just how much effort he was willing to put in to get better. With how much time he was consistently putting into the the game, it was only natural for steadfast improvement to follow suit, and Kalibet's efforts were absolutely rewarded. After about 4 months after he started playing the game, Akalibed was at his first 100 PP play on the Japanese version of the Corey in the House theme song, and this was immediately followed by another top play just a few hours later. Just a month after that, his first 200 PP play would come on Hitori Goto on May 19th, 2017, and on November 12th, he would set his new top play on Future Sun before the end of the year. The first 3 months of 2018 would mark Akalibed's most inactive period of his playing career, but even then, his play count never zeroed out, with 214 being his lowest monthly play count. Once he got back into extended Extensively playing the game, he picked up right where he left off. Akolibed would set his first 300 PP play on the Battletoads title theme on April 21st, 2018, and he would set his first 400 PP play on Bombs Away just four months later on August 11th, 2018, along with his second 400 PP play being set just two days after that on Change. In 2019, his score setting progression would slow down a little bit, but that wouldn't stop him from setting his first 500 PP play on Chikado Chika Chika on March 21st, 2019. By the end of 2019, Akolibed found himself inside the three digit ranks, and while at this time he was fairly unknown, his name would soon be known wide across the Yosu community. Once 2020 rolled around, Akalibed found himself fully immersed in the grind as his dedication would reach incredible heights. His monthly play count now found its way into the mid-high thousands, peaking at 9,456 in December 2020. Even in January, the month with Akalibed's lowest play count in 2020, it sat at 1,907, which was still a very productive month of practice and grinding. Perhaps this had something to do with a pandemic forcing everyone to stay indoors, but nonetheless, with the drastic increase of effort he was putting in came an entourage of scores and consistent improvement. Akalibet kicked off 2020 by setting his first 600 PP play on January 26, 2020. Five days after his first 600 PP play, Akalibet set his first 700 PP play on Quaver, which was immediately followed by his second 700 and yet another top play the very next week on Padoru. Four months later on June 14th, Akalibet would three month the nymph difficulty of Padoru for his first 800 PP play, and then set his second 800 and another top play two weeks later on Anime Bat. These incredible six months saw Akalibet find his way into the top 100, a 
position he would never relinquish throughout the rest of his playing career. But as incredible as these six months were, it was nothing in comparison to what he would do soon afterwards. As mentioned already, Akolibet's improvement is headlined by consistently putting in a ton of effort leading to consistent growth as a player. But besides that, there is another trait that separates Akolibet from his contemporaries that doesn't show up on his profile. Or at least, it doesn't show up on his profile until he shocks you with it. What makes Akolibet's playing ability truly so special alongside his commitment to the grind can be described with one word, explosiveness. With how much time he was putting in, it didn't just mean a lot of time he had to set scores. It also meant he had a lot of time to push his skill cap and test his limits. While he might not set scores at his highest level of play every single time, he constantly threatened to set scores way above those he had previously set, and it was clear at any time that if a Akolibet plays at his best, he could very well set unbelievable scores. And with how much he flirted with statistical absurdity, it was only a matter of time before he would make it come into fruition. This was evident through what he would do on July 19th, 2020, as a Akolibet with 3 Machikado Chika Chika to set a play worth 1,004 PP, jumping straight to the 1,000 PP milestone before he even set a single 900 PP play. Plays like these where someone completely supersedes a major PP threshold like this is informally known as a PP milestone skip, making this score a 900 PP skip since Akolibet had not yet broken the 900 PP threshold prior to this. Setting plays like this always comes as a massive shock because it demonstrates a burst of peak ability far above what a player has demonstrated in the past and completely shatters expectations of what they were once capable of. Very few top players have set PP milestone skips of their own, so Akolibet doing this amidst his fastest stretch of improvement yet was absolutely amazing. And little did anyone know at the time, but he would make plays like these become a normality. But despite everything that was mentioned, a lot of the reception from this score was fairly negative, with people finding this score unimpressive because it resembled the current aim meta that headlined the late 2010s and early 2020s. People still didn't really know much about Akolibet, and having this score be their first impression of him rubbed a few people the wrong way as they dismissed him as merely another one-trick aim player. Words like those can be extremely discouraging, but thankfully, Akolibet didn't let this get to him as he would simply keep his head down and put in the work. Akolibet's persistence and great score setting ability helped him reach the top 10 for the first time on December 6, 2020. Unfortunately, he couldn't stay there long as the January 2021 PP rework would nerf a few of his scores and temporarily take him outside the top 10. But that didn't stop him from regaining his top 10 status on April 10, 2021, and ever since then, he has always remained as a top 10 Osu player. It was also around this time two days ago where Emmerich would reach number one in the Osu rankings, overtaking White Cat and ending what was at the time the longest consecutive reign atop the Osu rankings after White Cat held the number one rank for 550 days straight. It was an incredible achievement with history being made along the line. And now with Akolibet quietly rising through the ranks, maybe it was possible for him to cement himself as the number one player one day. But in order to do that, he would first need to refine his skill set to have a chance at making that happen. And so we got back to the grind. Akolibet's steady improvement and consistent effort allowed him to reach the top five for the first time on July 16th, 2021 after overtaking Vaxe, removing him from the top five in the OC rankings for the first time in more than two years. Another downside with the January 2021 rework that I didn't mention before was that it nerfed his first 1,000 PP play behind the new 1K threshold. If Akolibet wanted another 1K, he would need to get another one in the new rework, which he would end up doing with an FC on Kira Kira days on September 15th, 2021. And just for good measure, he set another 1k just an hour later with a 3 mod play on Imagination. Surely now he was able to keep a play above the 1000 PP mark, right? Sadly, no. A new PP rework, this time the November 2021 rework, would take away both of these 1Ks away from Akolibet, once again leaving him without a single 1000 PP play and simultaneously dropped his rank from number 6 to number 8. Not even a new top play would give him his 1k back because he ended up skipping it entirely. His fourth time breaking the 1000 PP milestone turned out to be a rework assisted 1k skip as he set a 1108 PP play on Prima Stella on May 18th, 2022. It was also in this play that showcased a new change in Akolibet's playstyle. With double time, Prima Stella becomes a map that features both 270 BPM jumps as well as 270 BPM streams. It was a map that only the best speed players in the game could consistently combo with DT, as Emmerich and Jan Potato are the only other DTFCs. Akolibet beat their accuracy by a full 1%, showing his newfound proficiency on faster maps and streams. And this new strength in his playstyle was perfectly timed. With how Osu was evolving, it was clear that the game was shifting away from a solely aim-focused meta to one that would bring prominence to players that can shred on high BPM streams. Those who had the most success in this new meta were the ones able to combine their blazing fast streaming ability with their ability to hit fast jumps. Through his play on Prima Sella, it was clear that Akolibed made building his speed one of his top priorities in his practice, and with the already incredible aim he possessed, he knew that his speed grind was the next journey he would have 
have to embark on if he wanted to become the best. The rest of 2022 was a relatively quiet score setting year for Akolibet, but his activity didn't slump in the slightest. Just like 2021, his 2022 saw Akolibet luck thousands of plays each month as he sought to mold his skill set to become one of Osu's true elite. And although he didn't set many top plays outside of his Prima Stella score, that didn't mean he wasn't making progress. Not only was he now setting scores that would enter his top 100 with extreme proficiency, but all of the time he was putting in helped contribute to his skill set growth, especially in the speed department. By the end of the year, Akolibet sat at number 4 in the Osu rankings, his best ranking yet, with the potential to climb even higher than before. Once 2023 came around, Akolibet sought to put his newly minted skill set into fruition, but no one could have possibly expected just how crazy of a year Akolibet would have, as he might have set the greatest score setting year Ozo had ever seen in his entire history. Akolibet kicked off the year with a brand new Bochi The Rock top play on January 11th, 2023, which allowed him to surpass 20,000 profile PP and allowed him to reach the top 3 for the first time ever, and ever since that day, he would never lose his spot inside Osu's top 3. Unfortunately, Akolibet found a miss in the dying stretches of the map, where if he were to hold on to his FC, he would have set his first 1.2k PP play, a milestone that was only surpassed by two players that Akolibet would soon find himself being compared to, those two players being Emrek and Eterna. Although Akolibet's journey up to this point was impressive, many people brought to the side in favor of the legacies of these two players. At this point, Emrek was in the midst of his prime. His unparalleled score setting ability helped him build a monstrous gap of more than 3,000 PP between him and the number 2 ranked player Lifeline. Additionally, he became the third player ever to hold Osu's number 1 rank for a full calendar year in 2022, a feat previously attained by only Cookie Z in 2017 and White Cat in 2020. Out of the 16 plays worth at least 1.2k PP in the game at this time, Emrek had 14 of them, including 2 out of the 3 1.3k PP plays. Needless to say, he was the best player in the world, and it wasn't even close. The person with the other 1.3k PP play and the other two 1.2ks was Eterna. Even though Akolibet managed to overtake him on the Osu rankings and was becoming a top tier speed player in his own right, Eterna was still unanimously considered to be the greatest speed player in Osu history. With streaming capabilities far above everyone else, it was a title he earned dating as far back as his initial rise in 2020, long before Osu's latest speed meta took over and wounding keyboards aided universal speed progression. As Osu's meta shifted towards speed, Eterna was the one new gen speed players would find themselves being compared to, being seen as following in the footsteps as the one that revolutionized the skill set forever. If Akolibet wanted to surpass them one day and become the best, not only did he have to match what they were capable of, but he would have to surpass the incredible standard they set. But in order to get there, he first needed to worry about the person ahead of him on the rankings. Akolibet quickly followed up his 1.2k PP choke with another 1.1k PP play just 3 days later, which helped him surpass Lifeline for the number 2 rank, becoming the 4th player to reach 2nd on the Osu rankings behind Emrek. By this time when Akolibet finally reached number 2, the gap between him and Emrek was well over 3,000 PP. But that's not even the most pressing matter he would have to deal with, because he would end up losing his number 2 rank to Lifeline just a couple months later. Lifeline was yet another player Akolibet would find himself being compared to. While Emrek and Eterna lapped them in terms of raw ability and perceived potential, Lifeline was hailed as the one with the best chance to become the next number 1 player. People had more faith in Lifeline's ability to surpass Emrek, as he had remained the number 2 player for very long periods of time, ahead of Akolibet. And after Lifeline reclaimed his number 2 rank and closed the gap between himself and Emrek to a margin under 2,000 in the next few months, people believed that Lifeline was the one capable of dethroning Emrek sometime down the road. These three players were the ones Akolibet's legacy were overshadowed by, which was unfortunately a common practice with regards to his career. But he knew that surpassing the abilities of these three was the only way to the top, and so he remained true to his grind. Following this, Akolibet would set a few more formidable scores. He would set his first 10-star FC on an encounter, and if he were to fix the middling accuracy, he could very well set one of the highest value plays in the game sometime. Another 1.1k PP play on Glory Days demonstrated his now proficient speed capabilities, but these plays merely just set the stage for what he would soon do. On August 16th, 2023, Akolibet had the run of his life as he carried an FC on the Will Stetson cover of First Storm. If he were to hold on to his FC, he wouldn't just set a brand new top play. He would set a brand new PP record, which would be the first PP record in 8 months. All he needed to do was just hold on. Чё? Чё? Сколько я? Чё? 
Sadly, he found a catastrophic miss and choked the PP record, but this play was still good enough for a 1.2k PP skip and a Colibet's first 1.3k PP play. He became the third player in Osu history to set a 1.3k PP score after Emmerich and Eterna. Now, a Colibet had skipped the 900, 1000, and 1200 PP milestones, and he managed to set a 1.3k PP play before Lifeline, who still remained ahead of him on the Osu rankings. While this play was a massive step in the right direction, it would take a whole lot more to bridge the historic gaps he faced. In order to break history, you need to make history, and that's when a Colibet would seize control of the entire Osu community. On October 1st, 2023, Emmerich would break his previous PP record set all the way back in December 22 with arguably the craziest play of all time. Yet somehow, this score didn't even survive the end of the month before talks about it would cease, because a Colibet would go on the greatest score setting rampage Ozu had ever seen. Five days later on October 6th, a Colibet was holding onto an FC on Valley of the Damned with double time. He was hitting absolutely everything with incredible accuracy. Once he hit the final streams, all while holding onto his combo, the PP counter on his train reached a number that looked like a typo as the map eased into its end. And once he closed out the FC and submitted the play, this happened. Oh, <laughs> This play was worth so much PP, a Colibet set off Osu's auto restriction filters because the devs didn't think it was possible for anyone to set a play of this magnitude. And honestly, you couldn't really blame them. For reference, the former PP record Emmerich set before this was worth 1,381 PP. A Colibet's play on Valley of the Dam completely destroyed that, clocking in at 1,505 PP. Not only was this play a 1.4k PP skip for a Colibet, this was a 1.4k PP skip for the entirety of Osu's player base. There was not a single 1.4k PP play in Ozu's entire existence, yet a Colibet jumped straight to 1.5k PP like it was nothing. Never has there ever been a universal PP milestone skip in the 12 years Ozu's PP system existed up to this point, but now, a Colibet was the first to make it happen. Once he got unrestricted, everyone had realized that a Colibet had once again surpassed Lifeline for number 2 on the Ozu rankings, and this time, he wouldn't give Lifeline any breath of a chance to take that back. A Colibet would make his distaste for even numbered milestones publicly known, because just two days later, he would do the same thing again. A one 1,500 PP play on a Sewell remix. Over the course of 48 hours, Ozu went from having no plays above the 1,400 PP mark to having two plays of 1,500 PP or more. And those two plays were set by the same person. No one could believe what was happening around in front of their eyes as a Colibet's score setting ability reached a level no one came close to before. And he didn't stop there. A Colibet would then sprinkle in another high 1.3k PP play the very next day on Reign of Fear, reaching 24,000 PP and claiming a $500 bounty in the process. That bounty was reserved for the first person person besides Emmerich to reach 24,000 PP and was initially meant to motivate Lifeline to narrow the gap once it was put in place back in July. Many people thought that this was just free money for Lifeline, but a Colibet would completely annihilate Lifeline in the race to claim this bounty, a moment that marked a Colibet finally getting the best of one of his three biggest rivals. What was happening was unbelievable and almost unmatchable, but there was nothing that could have prepared us for what a Colibet would do in the next few days. As mentioned before, a Colibet was the first person to ever set a universal PP milestone skip with his play on Valley of the Day. But then, just seven days after his play on Valley of the Damned, he would do that again. On October 13th, 2023, Akolibet's cherry on top of his already historic score setting pop off would be his brand new top play on Sidetrack Day. This play was worth 1,711 PP, making this a universal 1.6k PP skip and the second universal PP milestone skip ever. The only two plays of this nature were set within the span of seven days. It was at this point when everyone would lose their shit. Emmerich's past PP record from just 12 days ago was now beaten by more than 300 PP. A Colibet had now skipped 900, 1000, 1200, 1400, and now 1600 PP as he rose above everyone else to be the first true challenger to Osu's number one rank we had seen in years. Previous discussions showed that people believed that Sidetrack Day with DT would become a game-breaking PP record courtesy of Eterna. He had come close to making that a reality a few times, but he just couldn't put the pieces together. Now, Sidetrack Day became the PP record just like they had predicted, but that score belongs to A Colibet did did something that many people thought only Eterna could do, showcasing a true fight for the number one rank and getting closer than Eterna had ever done in the past. While discussions between these two still run rampant, there's no question that Akolibet went on a better run for Osu's top rank than Eterna had ever done in the past. Now everyone knew that it was just Akolibet and Akolibet alone who had the best chance of reaching Osu's top rank, and now the only person he needed to beat was the person who held that spot for the past three years. Instead of cooling off after his insane score setting surge, Akolibet continued to set incredible scores. There was a high 1200 PP plan at least, a 1.3k 
PvP play on Speed Battle, two other 1.2k PvP plays on Through the Fire and Flames and Slider, and all of a sudden, the race for number one suddenly had competition once again. Before Kalibed's recent stretch of scores, the gap between Emrek and number two was nearly 2,000 PP. Kalibed had single-handedly closed that gap into the low three digits, with the gap getting as low as 216 PP. This was the closest anyone had ever been to Emrek's number one in more than two and a half years dating back to the days Emrek had barely surpassed White Cat for number one. Long gone were the days Emrek would relentlessly teabag Lifeline at every opportunity he had for failing to make a dent in his lead. For the first time ever, Emrek legitimately feared for his number one rank, and was forced to defend it from his greatest challenger yet. Just one more 1500 PP play was all he needed to claim the throne that eluded him for so long. Not too long ago, many people thought that setting scores of that nature would never happen, but a Akolibed had not only shown that those plays were possible, but beatable as well. Score setting records once thought to be out of reach soon came Akolibed's way, as everyone now waited for him to ascend in his moment of glory. The pace he was going at was so great, Emrek was willing to concede his number one rank, leaving Akolibed to control his destiny. All it took was just one more great score from Akolibed and the number one rank would be his. But that was a score that would never come to pass. Just like how Emrek said Burnout was the reason why he wouldn't defend his number one rank, Akolibed also listed Burnout as a major reason why he hasn't made the final push to the top. Both players reached a stalemate of sorts with neither player making any advances, but eventually, Emrek would slowly build his lead back up, and soon the gap between him and Akolibed was once again above 1000 PP by May 2024. Despite all the historic things he had done, he still found himself just shy of the ultimate goal. It was tragic, but that's unfortunately just the nature of the uphill battle Akolibed was fighting. In order to overtake the person who displayed never before seen levels of historic dominance, it meant you were also putting yourself in the most difficult journey to number one Oso had ever seen. The same journey that no one was able to complete for more than 1000 days in a row. Being the best in anything is never easy, but taking down arguably the greatest of all time at your respective craft in order to do so makes it that much more brutal. If it would all fall apart like this, Akolibed might be remembered as the best player in Osu history to never reach number one. We were so close to finally witnessing a change at the top, but if he were to come up short in the end, this historic stretch might be chalked up to nothing more than a crazy Cinderella story. But Akolibed didn't want to go down like this. Once he regained his motivation to play, he decided to put up everything he could muster into one final push. He wanted to work back into giving himself another chance, just like he had always done before. The first few months of 2024 for Akolibad got off to a pretty dry start, perhaps due to his recent lack of motivation. There were still a few notable plays that he would sprinkle in, such as a slight accuracy fix on the Will Setson cover of First Storm. And although his activity did slightly drop in comparison to how much he had played in the past, it wasn't an unproductive start by any means. Things would start to pick up once again on June 20th with this play on Flight of the Bumblebee, which helped the Kalibet cross the 26,000 PP mark and got him back into the swing of things. It was also around this time that he was consistently logging in attempts on Valley of the Veil, where he would set his first 1.4k PP play 4 days later on June 24th. It was a bit weird saying that the person who broke the 1700 PP milestone set his first 1.4k PP play 9 months after the fact, but that's just symbolic of how explosive a Kalibet's play can be at his best. A slight accuracy fix would bump this play up to 1460 61 PP. And once July rolled around, Akolibed would once again slowly get his way back into striking distance. On July 8th, he set a 1.3k PP play on Necrophantasia, which could have been worth up to 1,459 PP if he didn't find a miss towards the end. Thankfully, he brushed that aside and once again put himself in true contention for Osu's number one just two days later on July 10th. The attempts he was putting into Valley of the Veil finally paid off as Akolibed would finally set his long-awaited FC, earning himself his first 1.6k PP play and closing the gap to just 313 PP. It would only take 7 more 1.3k PP plays, 2 more 1.4ks, or any play worth at least 1,627 PP to finally overtake Emrek once and for all. And this time, there was nothing Emrek can do to stop it. With Emrek being on vacation and away from home, the outcome of this race once again rested in Akolibet's fingertips. And this time, he didn't want to give Emrek a second chance. Within the next week, Akolibet set a few 1.3k PP scores on Over the Top and Excalibur on July 17th, and the Japanese Miku version of First Storm on July 18th, and by day end, Akolibed was now less than 100 PP away from overtaking Emrek. It had been more than three years since someone was this close to Emrek, and now people were counting down the days Emrek had left at the top as Akolibed was doing everything in his power to claim number one on stream. Two days later, on July 20th, Akolibed wanted to end things right then and there. He hopped on his stream and played for almost five hours straight as he sought to claim his long-awaited crown atop the Osu rankings. But the historic levels of pressure got to him as he would tragically choke away the play that would have gotten him to number one several times. However, he did get 
himself closer after setting two 1.1k PP plays on Storytellers and Life Sucks, and two 1.2k PP plays on Asul Remix and Glory Dates. This brought him just 38 PP behind Emmerich by the end of the day, putting him in prime position to finally finish the job. The very next day, tens of thousands of people gathered in a Bed stream for the moment he would finally seal the deal and take number one. There were many more number one chokes that he stumbled upon, as the pressure of the moment only got more and more intense as he got closer. He kept on trying for an hour and a half in search of that one final play. And finally, after so long, after getting so close so many times, he would do it. Once and for all. G G G G G G G G G fucking G. After choking the number one rank 11 times, a Bed would set an FC on over the top to officially claim number one in the Osu rankings on July 21st, 2024, bringing the end to Emmerich's reign atop the Osu rankings after 1,200 days. A Bed had finally surpassed his third and final rival, as he could finally bask in the glory that he had long sought after. He became the first UK Osu player to reach number one since Doomsday in 2011, and the first ever Latvian Osu player to reach number one in the game's near 17 year history. Just like how White Cat took number one in 2019 with an FC on Take Me to the Top to get him to the top, in true poetic lyrical justice, a Colibet FC'd over the top to get over the top of the most difficult journey to number one in Osu history. There was never a point where anything came easy to a Colibet. Everything was a struggle, and he was never afraid to face any challenge that came his way head on. He put in immense amounts of work, never surrendering and succumbing to the pressures and hardships of the grind. Even though he embarked on a journey people once considered to be impossible, even though people long underestimated what he was capable of, and even even though he was mostly overshadowed by the players he was long compared to, he finally got the best of them all. The player that long flew under everyone's radar. The one initially seen as just another PP farmer. The one almost no one believed in was now the one who completed the most treacherous journey in Osu history. It was a journey that required unwavering levels of discipline ever since the beginning, but Akolibed wouldn't want it any other way. He knew that everything he wanted to do required all the effort he could possibly get out of himself. That was why he gave this game everything he had and more, even from the very start. From day one, Akolibed knew that incredible degrees of commitment was his one path to greatness. But I don't think even he knew just how great that path would end up being. I finally did it. <laughs>